couple others came out. And them brothers, man, them, them, them brothers are young men, and they've been in this thing from the very beginning, and they're still out there strong, man, you know? They are, the brothers out there in uh, Dallas, they've been, they've been in New York, what, about 15 times? Like every, every six months, man. And then brothers from New York, I went out there a bunch of times. You know, we have other brothers in other states that come, come, come out that we know that we that kind of built up a rapport with us. That we have brothers that come out and then wound up, you know, falling off and talking shit about us. Yeah, yeah, you can. All right, uh, this is Luke uh, fourteen and twenty-five. It says, uh, "Yeah, you know, like like I said, that those are ungrateful." Matter of fact, um, get that scripture. Uh, what, what is what is that? Um, Second Timothy three is that three? Okay, let me get that real quick. This is the book of Second Timothy chapter three. See the, the scriptures, man. That's why that's why th these things are written in the scriptures. You thinking that what's going on right now is something that just happened in, in this in this lifetime? This is something that's been going on for since time since the beginning of time. You know, every time, ever since the prophets were on the scene, there was always somebody that was talking shit about them, was cool with them, and then left and started talking shit about them. You know, this is Second Timothy three and one, and this this is this is the times we're in right now. Second Timothy three and one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, and we've been warning you about these perilous times, so you can get yourself ready and together and get your mind, wrap your mind around what's what's going to happen. So when it happens, you, 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 you have a defense, which, which begins with the names of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and this truth that you've been taught. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. It says, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. You know, here it is. We're, we're your parents in, in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, but you became disobedient. It says, it says, unthankful, unholy. So you're unthankful. Yeah, um, second, um, uh, the book of Sirach, also known as uh, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, the fourth chapter, 22nd verse. It says, um, accept no person against thy soul and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So, you know, that pretty much explains itself. That's why we're very leery of, uh, you know, of certain guys, you know, Scripture say, except you can't. And then it, it also in the Apocrypha, it says a friend is known in adversity. You know, that's when you truly know a friend, when you both go in adversity together and, and he's there for you and you're there for him. You've got each other's back. That's how you kind of prove a friend, you know, not because he's giving flattering you and, you know, saying wonderful things about you, you know. Yeah, because we got a couple of brothers from Atlanta that's up here right now. They're at the camp right now, you know. Well, Atlanta and um, North Carolina camp. So we got a couple of brothers that came up, <clears throat> but they've been up before, a couple times before. So <clears throat> we know them. Anyway, I'm going to go to this. Uh, let's go back. Let's go to camera two, and I'm going to set this thing up. Okay, this right here um, is Marcus. Um, and this is when they first, this is uh, part two. Of the interview with with uh, X, uh, IUIC Black Hebrew. I don't know what. Now, when do we ever call ourselves Black Hebrew Israelites? Never. Yeah, well, because they're they're a bunch of devils. That's why we call you guys a bunch of devils, man. You know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna click on this. The, the verses above, and that's dealing with you know uh, the disciples of Christ facing persecution. For following Christ, you know, this is when you would have, you know, their very own, uh, but you know, betraying them and delivering them up to be killed for believing in Christ. You know, so that would be the context that this verse is is, is uh, referring to. You know, it's not saying to, uh, you know, separate yourselves from your family. You know, so that would be my, you know, that's my uh, my my thing on that scripture. There was uh, two at least response videos that I could see made from our last interview of this one by Tahar from GMS and then another GMS member made a response. Hold up. I was a, I was a brother 
wasn't our brother when he wrote me that letter? I mean, sent me that comment. Hey, brother Taha, hey, Mr. Taha. Now I'm just Taha. Come on, vocab. Response video from our last interview. And in that, he said, basically, in regards to you bringing that up, that, hey, this is a biblical doctrine. You're supposed to separate yourself from people who don't believe. So why is Marcus against you this? Here, you know what I'm saying? Just because this isn't here. a scripture, and we're reading this, the words of Christ. I want to reiterate what are you saying and not saying, just so nobody misunderstands. We're not denying that Christ said this. We're not denying there's a proper. If y'all can hear this, uh, let us know. If you can't, you know, we'll work on it. Because I can hear it on this uh, laptop here. Okay, so they're saying they can hear it loud and clear. Yeah, sound is too wild. Yeah, they can hear. Okay. For way to interpret it, we're just making sure people can see the way it's misused by some of the groups. Can you explain a little bit further so people are clear on what you're saying and not saying? about the misuse of Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Yeah, let me actually read it real quick. I'm going to read this scripture. Um, Matthew. Well, I read verses 34 and 35. You want to read some chapter? more? I can read 36 and 39. Uh, yeah, yeah, read 36 yeah, is... 39. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loves, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And that's right after Christ said, I didn't come to bring priests on earth, but a sword. And people will be set against themselves in their own household. I mean, let me say a little something and then see what you're getting at. What we're saying is Christ did say this. He said this in relationship to we must count the cost for discipleship because we must recognize that persecution will come. Now, ironically, the first persecution that really came for this early church was primarily those in Jerusalem who accused the Christians a lot of times of not doing what? Not keeping the law. In fact, one time Paul was even accused of what? Bringing Gentiles up into the spot when he shouldn't have, right? Now, Hold on. Come back to us. And this clown, Vocab Malone, doesn't understand the scriptures. Um, he said, uh, let me pause this, that the apostle Paul brought Gentiles into the temple. Well, those, were, those Gentiles were Israelites. See, if you understood the scriptures, you would, you would know when you come across the, the word Gentile, whether it's talking about an actual Israelite or a person of another nation. The Apostle Paul ain't going to bring no damn natural Gentiles into the temple. Matter of fact, get me um, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 and 2. This is our 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, which is who's the brothers? Israelites. I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led so what made you a gentile was that you were carried away by these dumb idols you were an israelite but you were casted out as a heathen because you went after these idols and it's that simple you came that's foreign something. to the heavenly father and the, and the knowledge of his only begotten son the that's what, uh, yeah. not, uh, strangers to the commonwealth of, of, of israel that's what made them essentially that's what made them gentiles they did not accept yahweh shai as being the only begotten son of the heavenly father and being the salvation of the nation of Israel. That's right. You know? Yeah, because that, that, see, that was the thing. That's the reason why Paul had to go and gather. It started with uh, uh, Peter, but Paul was the one that was set up to go gather those from among the, from among the nations, the Israelites from among the nations that were being called Gentiles. Cause the first step is they had to accept Yahweh Shai in order to be forgiven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's it. That's it. Um, I got a quick scripture here, Romans 9 and 4, which, you know, we always read the scripture, but it tells you who, uh, well, let me start at the third verse, Romans 9 and 3, for I could wish, now this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Israelites in Rome that were calling themselves Romans, 
but they weren't Romans, they were Israelites living in Rome. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahawishai, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, according to what? The lineage, all right? Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? So those Gentiles that Vocab Malone mentioned that was palling around with Paul, they were Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. Because Paul is telling you, according to my flesh, who are Israelites? I mean, according to the lineage. Yeah, and the reason why the the the, the reason why the, the Jews were giving them such a hard time was because those Israelites had fallen out of favor. You know, right. they 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 had they 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 had turned away from Yahweh Bashem Al Shai and were called outcasts. Right, right, right. One of a uh, couple of reasons why they were called Gentiles too by the Jews is. They dressed different, and they spoke Greek. Now, in that book, um, uh, what is it? Nature Knows No Color Line. There's an excerpt from that book, and, and the excerpt says that the Jews, that uh, they'd rather eat pork. The saying was, we'd rather eat pork than to speak Greek, because Greek was looked down upon. The, the, yeah, the, but now Greek is an important language. Yeah, the scripture to understand the scriptures. Yeah, but back you know, then, back Greek, then it was uh, man. Greek was it was a bastard language, a yeah. bastard tongue. If you spoke Greek, it was like the pure uh, language of the earth is the Hebrew. <laughs> right, Hebrew was the language that one had to speak, especially if you're Israelite. Yeah, it you says here in Ephesians twelve, uh, Ephesians two and eleven. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, meaning you didn't circumcise yourself. You might have had marks in your in your in your in your face. You might have had some sort of tribal marks, or uh, you might have shaved your head bald. You know, dressed dressed differently, didn't have a beard. You know, you look like a, a heathen. All right. It says, uh, "Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh." who are called uncircumcision because they were actually uncircumcised, which, which this is a metaphor, a metaphor for uh, not being under the laws of the Most High. It doesn't just mean uncircumcised. By that which is called the circumcision. The circumcision are the Israelites that grew up as Israelites that were circumcised on the eighth day that kept all the laws, statutes, and commandments in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without the Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. So you were outside the circle of the blessings of Israel. It says, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without the most high in the world. This is talking about Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites. But now in Yahweh Shai, Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai. Why? Because Yahweh Shai died on the cross for the nation of Israel. He came for the nation of Israel. He said he commanded the disciples to go to the nation of Israel. Now, why would he make that great commission that, that it's called a great commission to go out and preach the gospel to all nations? Because he was referring to the Israelites scattered among the nations. All right. It says, but now in Yahweh Shai, ye, which the, the actual word is Christ Jesus, which is uh, the Lord, ye are sometimes, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of, of the Messiah. For he is our peace who have ma made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us. It's not talking about between the Israelites and the act natural Gentiles. It's talking about the Israelites and knew that they knew that they were Israelites and the Israelites that didn't necessarily know that they were Israelites. It said, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twine of two one new man, so making peace. And uh, 16, and that he might reconcile both unto the Most High. What does the word reconcile mean? Let's look it up. Reconcile. That means you had it one time and you lost it and you're going to get it back again. So the Gentiles never had it. Let me go to reconcile. Reconcile. 
That's a long word right there. Apocatalasso. I said that quick, so don't forget it. All right, to, to reconcile completely, to reconcile back again, bring back a former state of harmony. So that's so that one time they were together with the Most High, but they lost um, that connection with the Most High, mainly these Israelites that were called Gentiles, and now they're brought back. So it's not talking about actual Gentiles. Like you Edomites, like Dr. James White. He's an Edomite. There's no hope for salvation for that guy. <laughs> uh, I got a quick precept, uh, if I could find it. I believe it's in Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. Just give me one second. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 16 and 5. Because it said uh, um, to, to bring back harmony, right? Harmony, another word for harmony is what? Peace. This is Jeremiah 16 and 5. For thus saith Yahweh, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from this people, saith Yahweh, even loving kindness and mercies. That's why Yahweh Shai had to come and bring back that peace between the Most High and us. See? Yeah, you have some possible. Yeah, um, yeah uh, the book of 1 John 2 1 to 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And what is sin? Transgression of the law, right? One of the reasons the Lord cast away Israel because they were what? Continually transgressing the law. They were committing sins, right? And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And who was the law given to? The law was only given to the nation of Israel. Only they could sin. Okay? Um, Yahweh Shai let me read that again. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, any man of, of what nation? The nation of Israel. Only Israelites can sin because they got the law. Okay? Right. And if any man sin, which means trans, what is sin? Transgression of the law, right? First John 3 and 4. We have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shai the righteous. And he is the appropriation for our sins. Now, I looked that word up. It means appeasing. In other words, Yahweh Shai appeases the wrath of the Heavenly Father. Right. That, he calms that, him down. <laughs> that, that brought the peace back between the Most High and Israel. That's why one of Yahweh Shai's titles is Prince of Peace. Yeah, because right. he made peace between the Heavenly Father and the nation of Israel. Because the Heavenly Father cast us away for being wicked. And where you get every nation in there, man? And he is the appropriation for our sins. And not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. And that whole world is talking about the whole world of Israel, starting with the elect on down to the whole world of Israel. Because when you look that word up, world, the word there is cosmos, all right? Which means a separate organization. There it is. I just looked it up. The word there is cosmos, which means a separate organization, the organization of the world of Israel. Uh, what is that, uh, Isaiah 45 and 17? World without end. All right, that's it. Yes, we, no. So basically, you know, Israel, the the Israelite uh, foreigners, as we call them, they they had uh, uh they were pre pretty much cast cast uh castaways, you know, casted out. They were casted out. And um, this is Saint John eight and forty seven. Now we know that Yahweh Shai is from the tribe of Judah, you know, as the scriptures say, right? Uh, it says uh, this is Saint John eight forty seven. He that is of the Most High, this Yahweh Shai speaking. He that is of the Most High heareth the Most High's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of the Most High. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Why did they call him a Samaritan? Because they considered the Israelites that were outside of, of Israel, outside of the favor of the Lord, they, they considered them apostates. You know, and the ones that were considered apostate would run among the Samaritans. You know, so, so they called Yahweh Shai, pretty much they called him a heathen. You know, they call them a heathen. And, and, and the scripture. And, and he got mad. He yeah. said, why are you dishonoring me? Right. So if he came for everybody, why would he say that? Why would he make, <laughs> why would he make that statement? Right, right. He didn't want to be a Samaritan. He said, why are you dishonoring me? In other words, why are you calling me a Samaritan? Right. Why are you dissing me? If he came for everybody, right, including the Samaritans, why would he make that statement? Come on, vocab. That's why we tell you, man, you're way Cut above. It out. 